All right, guys, so the running joke is you build these computers in your kitchen. Do you ever cook in your kitchen? Yes, I love cooking. You know, I'm a very particular eater, a very finicky eater, like off the charts finicky, but I enjoy cooking things I won't eat. I, I enjoy um, just, you know, putting together the seasonings and then asking whoever I'm making it for how it tastes. You know, does it need more salt or does it need more of this or that? And then I make notes and I remember how to make it for next time. And that's how I get better as a cook who is a particular eater who won't necessarily eat everything he cooks. So today I'm going to show you how to make one of my favorite things as a, as a nerd, as a geek, as a computer guy. Most of us all have two things in common apart from loving computers and that is a caffeinated drink, which for me is Coca-Cola, for others it's Mountain Dew or whatever, and uh, whatever it may be. Uh, and of course pizza. Pizza is the main staple. I love pizza. Uh, let me tell you, I don't eat food because it helps me live. I eat food because it's so good I want more and if food doesn't taste good to me then I won't eat it. So there's a lot of foods that I don't eat. I don't even, if any of those foods even touch the foods I normally like, I won't eat that part that's touching. So <laughs> I'm pretty extreme. But the good part is usually what I found is what I like most people like. So because I like real basic things. So if this works out I'll show you a few other things I cook but let's start today with real easy pizza that's fresh and it's going to taste so much better you're never going to want Domino's or Pizza Hut or Papa John's or Hungry Howie's or any of those guys you're never going to want those again once I show you this recipe and how easy and fun this is to do all right so the first thing I want to do is I want to preheat my oven to 425 degrees Now while the oven's warming up, I'm going to reach inside, I'm going to pull out my pizza stone. Now, cooking pizza without a pizza stone, you're not cooking a pizza. You're cooking some bread with tomato sauce and cheese on it. A pizza stone is really the only way to make your own pizza if you're serious about it. This pizza stone is dirty, nasty. When it was brand new, it was like this color here. And here's the thing, you never ever wash a pizza stone. This is called being seasoned. This is very porous ceramic material. And what happens if you wash it is the water will actually get soaked into it. And then when you heat it up in the oven one day, the water molecule expands and it'll put a crack, cut this thing right in half. So how do you clean it? You guys grab a paper towel, which I should have right here. And just go over to your trash can and just wipe it down and just get all the crud off of it. If you have any stubborn crud on your pizza stone, you can scrape at it and get that stuff off of there. The darker it is, the better it is. And as somebody who's got OCD and likes things clean, this is really hard for me to understand. But let me tell you, when this thing was brand new, it didn't taste very, the stuff I cooked on it didn't taste very good. Now stuff tastes a lot better. So we're going to go ahead and put this back in the oven now so the stone can heat up along with the oven. So we're going to put this right down here on the bottom tray. Now the trick to making a good pizza is pretty simple. Basically you need to make sure you have a good crust, you have a good tomato sauce, you have good cheese, and you have good fresh toppings. Nothing, no single individual part of the pizza can be cheap or it ruins the whole pizza. So for example, I've got some ingredients out here and there's different levels of, of fresh. Uh, ignore this shrimp. This is something, this is shrimp scampi I'm making later that has nothing to do with this video. Pretend that's not there. Unless you like shrimp on your pizza, which I hear people in England like. But that being said, uh, I'm gonna grab a plate just to start prepping. So let me just reach up here grab a plate. Now let's start with the pizza dough. People think, man, I don't want to spend all that time with the flour, water, yeast, flour, flour sugar, salt, and, and, and wait, and then have to knead it and roll it out. It's a lot of work. I agree, especially if you like a thin crust. I mean a super thin crust pizza, like New York style thin crust. Here's my hack. I go to the store and I buy burrito size flour tortillas. 
these are available at pretty much any grocery store in the United States. And that's going to be our pizza crust. And these things are just perfect, but there's a trick. Because if you don't do it right, it's going to be all limp. So here's the secret. First of all, we're just going to grab one of these. You'll see there's a side that's darker than the other. I tend to put the darker side down. It, it doesn't really matter. Honestly, guys, use whatever side of the tortilla you want. Life is good on both sides of the tortilla. That's all I got to tell you. That's advice from your Uncle Kerry. All right. Next, you need a really good tomato sauce. Um, I'm sorry, a pizza sauce made with tomato sauce. So I've already done that here to save some time. And this is made with pizza sauce. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> This is made with tomato sauce, tomato paste, a little bit of vinegar, a little bit of sugar, a little bit of Italian seasoning, a little bit of salt. I'll have that uh, whole recipe that I use. That's online, and there'll be a link to that recipe for this sauce um, in the video description below. And I just want the biggest spoon I can get here. I'm just going to mix this up. It's been in the refrigerator, so it's a little bit, um, it, it, it's not as watery as I'd like it to be. Now you can always add a little water or you can add a little more um, vinegar, any, any sort of liquid to it to help loosen it up. Or don't be a dummy like me and I, I could have taken it out of the refrigerator a little earlier. But that's okay. It's going to spread just fine. I like a zesty pizza sauce. I don't want it spicy, but I don't want it sugary and sweet. To me, that's like a child's pizza, like you get it Chuck E. Cheese or... Uh, you know, one of these family-friendly pizza chains that has video games and stuff. People don't generally go there for the pizza, right? It's not like, oh my God, they have the best pizza there. You never hear people say that. Uh, at least I don't. So I make my own pizza sauce, and that way I can make it exactly the way I like it. And I like it to have um, a tanginess or a zestiness to it. I don't want it to be sugary, and I don't want it to be spicy. The first time I made this, I put crushed red pepper in it, and I would, you know, take, take my finger and dip it and try it, and it tasted good. But when you had a bunch of it on the pizza, it was, oh my God, it was way too spicy. So while it's good to taste as you're, you know, mixing your food, be sure and taste it to see where you're getting. Keep in mind you're going to be eating a lot more of it, and particularly with the sauce. So I'm just going to take the sauce here, and we're not going to use a lot of it. Now there's no meat in here. I, I realize because the refrigerator has kind of gelled it up, it kind of looks like a, some kind of spaghetti sauce. But I assure you, this is not spaghetti sauce. And I probably should have added a little water to this now that I'm spreading it out. It is a, it's still a bit thick, but you know what? That's okay. I got two big heaping spoonfuls. And let's see if we can lower this camera down so you can see what I'm doing a little bit here. And I just want to spread that out as evenly as possible all the way to the edge. Now, if you have OCD like me, you don't like touching <laughs> the food. You're like, I want to touch the dry crust. That's the handle. But here's the thing. This tortilla shell is going to burn real, real easy. So if it's not covered with something, you're going to end up with a potentially a really badly burned piece of tortilla or end of crust on your pizza that you're not going to want to eat. That's how fast it'll burn and, and how deep it'll burn. So, and it'll, it'll just taste terrible. So if you get the tomato sauce, and the tomato sauce, that's going to burn real easily too, but it tastes like burned tomatoes, which to me is delicious. I love that flavor. Uh, I will have burned tomatoes any day over burned, uh, burned bread, burned tortilla. So yeah, just get that all the way out there onto the edges. And because this is a zesty pizza sauce, I don't want to use too much of it or it's going to be overwhelming. My wife is on a low-carb diet where she can't have bread. So she uses a bowl like a dish like this. This dish has a name. It looks like this. Manicotti is often served in a dish like this. But she'll make something she calls pizza guts. And pizza guts, with the diet that she's on, um, she just can't have the bread, but she, but she can have everything else. She can have the cheese, the 
tomato sauce and whatever topping she wants. So she makes it in that dish and cooks it in the oven and that's, that's really good too. Obviously it's, it's something you have to eat with a fork. It's not, it's not a handheld food like pizza. But um, another idea out there for those of you looking to cut bread out of your diet. So another reason we don't want to put too much uh, tomato sauce here is it'll also prevent the tortilla from getting um, hardened. It'll, it'll stay limp. Bingo. All right, so the oven just beeped and tells us it's at 425 degrees. That's exactly where I want it. So let me move this back. Point this down. And I'm going to grab my tortilla shell. Well, first let me grab my oven mitt because this is an important tool. And of course, Lyle has to lay right here. Come on, boy. I know it's your favorite TV show that's on right now. And you'll see that pizza stone, the grease and everything that's settled on it, uh, that is normal. It's preferred. It's going to give it flavor. It's not going to make you sick. You've got to trust me on this, guys. And we're going to lay this shell on top of this hot stone. And that's going to start cooking the bottom of that tortilla. We're going to let that cook until it gets just to the point where it's starting to get brown. So we'll give this five minutes. And while that's cooking, we can start to prep our fresh ingredients. Now I've already got some pepperonis out here and mm, it's good pepperoni, but I have to be honest, on the pizza I made with this new sauce, you can't taste these pepperonis at all. You know, you can feel the texture in your mouth, but they don't, if anything, they almost add more sodium, more salt flavor. And I don't want my pizza to taste Salty. You want this, Lyle? Good boy. All right, so we're not using that. When it comes to cheese, you can get a big block of mozzarella cheese like this. They sell it a couple different ways. One way is called, it'll say fresh, and it appears to have be uh, liquidy. That's very difficult cheese to work with when you're making a pizza. I don't recommend that. It should be a solid, dry piece of cheese. And then you can either cut this in slices and you can use a cheese cutter or a piece of wire, clean wire, let a cheese cutter, to slice it in sheets and lay it down in sheets like a, a fancy Italian restaurant might do. Or just get some real mozzarella cheese that's not finely shredded. The finely shredded cheese will, <laughs> will think you've got more cheese on your pizza than you do. So just go ahead and get the traditional cut, you know, um, pure mozzarella. If you like to blend other cheeses like Romano or Parmesan or Asiago or any of the others, of course, feel free to experiment. That's the whole fun of this. But I'm showing you what I make. Here's what I like. Now, you might say, well, what about those pepperonis? You brought them out. You're not even going to use them. Oh, I know. I use them. Don't worry. I'm going to use them. Just not on my pizza. I'm going to use them while I'm making my pizza. So as a fussy eater, I'll give you an example. I don't like onions. Man, I really don't like onions. But I like onion rings. I don't like green peppers. Never have. But on a pizza, I love them. So the only way I eat a green pepper is on a pizza. The only way I eat an onion is on an onion ring. And if an onion is on a hamburger, it is the most disgusting thing to me. I can't eat it. Or a hot dog or chili or... I, I can't. I just can't. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this up. I've cut up some mushrooms the other day. And I'm going to try putting some fresh garlic on the pizza, but I'm too, it's too messy. It's garlic gets sticky and it's got these skins and there's little tricks to getting it all off. So instead, I'm going to cheat and I'm going to use some fresh uh, minced garlic. So that job will be done for me. And remember, anything you put on top of the cheese is going to get crispy. So I like, like my pepperonis, I like them to get crispy and they almost have like a bacon-like texture to them. If you put your ingredients on under the cheese or you put cheese on on top of your ingredients, you know, with multi layers of cheese, it's going to change the texture of some of your ingredients. Mushrooms cook about the same one way or the other. They might be a little drier if they're on top. Um, the green peppers would be about the same. Pepperonis really make a huge difference because under the cheese, they look just like this. Over the cheese, 
You get them nice and brown and burned on the edges. Oh, so good. So good. All right, let me check our pizza crust. Let's see how it's doing. We're good right there. So I'm going to take it out, and you can see how well done that is. And I'm going to set it right up here on top of the stove. As this sits on the stone, it's going to continue to cook the bottom of this tortilla shell, which is important. We have other things we have to do, and that is we've got to cut this green pepper. So let's do that right now. Give all your vegetables a good rinse. Let's get in here. Let's get a plate. And everybody's got their own way on cutting vegetables. Some people cut certain ways. Uh, for me, it's all about trying to get it done as efficiently and as quickly as possible. And I also want to save as much of the green pepper as possible. There's a lot in here like this, all this white needs to go. So I don't need this much green pepper. So for the sake of this video, Okay, so we're gonna start obviously with the cheese. Cheese always melts towards the center. So when you put your cheese on, put it around the edges. And a lot of people go crazy with the cheese and you will ruin this pizza if you put too much cheese on it. I'm just telling you, I mean, I like cheese as much as the next guy, but I've seen some people just go like it was gonna be their last piece of cheese they're ever gonna eat in their life. And basically, I'm just trying to cover up 95% of the red. That's all I'm trying to do. That is more than enough cheese for that pizza. That's generous. This would be considered extra cheese at most pizza places. Normally at this point I would put some pepperonis down, but as I mentioned, I don't like the way the pepperonis taste with this sauce. So I'm going to eat those. Now I've got mushrooms. As a fussy eater, I enjoy mushrooms sauteed, as long as they're white mushrooms, so I guess I'm a mushroom racist. I also enjoy them deep fried, and I also enjoy them on pizza. Now, if you used canned mushrooms, they're disgusting. They're rubbery, they got a lot of water in them, and they will ruin an otherwise perfect pizza. Next, I'm going to grab my uh, minced garlic, and we're going to open that up. Now, this is new for me. I've never done this with minced garlic before. So, I hope it's not too overpowering. But I'm about to find out. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm actually going to grab a little fork. And I just want to take a little bit of the garlic out. And I just want to dress it around very very lightly garlic is very strong a little goes a long way and you know a jar like i was really trying to find a jar that was much smaller than that when i was shopping and uh, this was the smallest that walmart had so that is what i ended up with i think maybe just a little bit more Ooh, that's too much right there Gotta remember, it's gonna be cut, right? So we wanna make sure every piece is gonna have some on there. And I see a little empty spot I wanna fill right over here. Sorry, I gotta get rid of these pepperoni. They're distracting me. All right, finally, we're gonna add our green peppers. And again, we just want an even spread. We wanna have coverage so that we get a, a little green pepper in every bite. That's the pizza right there. That is ready to go in the oven. Now, because the bottom of this is already cooked, we only need to cook the top of it. So to cook the top of it, we want to go to the oven and we want to turn on the broiler. So when you, when you normally bake, the, the bottom burner turns on it. It heats from the bottom to the top. When you broil, it heats from the top to the bottom. So when we're heating from the bottom to the top, I generally put the pizza stone on the bottom rack to get it closest to the heat. So since I'm now going to be broiling, 
guess where I'm putting the pizza stone. It's going to go on the top rack, not closest to the boiler because the, the top rack can be moved up, but we're going to put it uh, where the rack is currently on the top rack. So that broiler can now just work on heating all this top up and browning everything nice. So let's do that right now. All right, let's see how this is doing. It's good to turn it about halfway through. You'll see we're getting a nice brown on there. And the edges are really, really looking dark. This is about where I want it. But maybe another, another 40 seconds, something like that. We're really, really close. With that broiler, it's gonna cook fast, okay? It's like, it, it seems like it's gonna take a while for it to start. And then once it starts, it's gonna just go crazy. And that is perfect for me. I like foods well done. You're going to see all the burned cheese that was on the stone here, which is just gross. I guess some people like that, but I wouldn't eat it. But you'll see all the edges here. That's all tomato sauce that's burned rather than just our tortilla that's burned. So this actually will taste good. At least to me it does. And I like to just slide the, the, uh, the pizza cutter underneath it to make sure it's not sticking. And again, the longer you let it sit on the stone, the more that bottom is going to uh, firm up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start cutting this. And you cut it right on the stone. And I usually like to cut into eight pieces. Basically, it's just a matter of moving very, very quickly. I just want to take the, make sure that they're separated or they're going to stick. You're going to drop it on the floor. I'm going to take that and put it in the same position on the plate. We're going to do that all the way around. Now that right there, see I can get rid of, that's a burnt piece of cheese, which I think is gross, but Lyle likes it. There you go, boy. And I'm just going to let this cool for a couple minutes. It's really hard to do because it smells so good. There's one ingredient I just realized I forgot. It's been sitting in front of me the whole time. This is basil. And normally, I like my pizza with basil cooked on it. But you know what? The raw basil is also really good. And this raw basil, um, it, it can really make the difference between a good pizza and a great pizza. Fresh basil, man, that's the way to go. Also, if you look behind me, I have this really cool pepper grinder. This isn't a product placement. I just want you guys to know that um, this pepper grinder is available at Amazon. <laughs> it sounds like a product placement. What's cool about it is you don't have to crank it. When you tilt it, it automatically starts grinding the pepper for you. And I use a lot of fresh ground pepper. It's the only way I use pepper. And, you know, it takes a while to sit there and grind out enough pepper. So having it battery operated like that and uh, like I said, I'll put a link to it. It's a very useful kitchen utensil to have. You've probably seen it in the background in many of my videos. All right, guys, this is it. This is our taste test here. Let me get rid of some of that stuff off the sides. Oh, wow. That garlic. Okay. The mushrooms are fantastic with this sauce and this uh, crust. Got some basil on that one. Basil would have been better cooked. I would have preferred it cooked. You can hear how crunchy the pizza is. It's not like a cracker crunchy, but it's a uh, it's not soft either. All right, let's try another one here. I know there's different amounts of garlic. Boy, I got a, I got a bunch of garlic on one little bite. It was a little overpowering. Mm. I wish we could try this. I really do. But 
Actually, you can try it. I just meant I wish you could try it with me right now. Because, um, actually, no, I don't. Then I'd have to share it. I forget I take that. I take that back. You can see the bottom. If you're curious what the bottom looks like. Oh, I almost lost a mushroom. You see when I pick up that pizza? It doesn't fall. It stays firm like that. If you don't pre-cook the burrito, the, the tortilla, flour tortilla, burrito size, if you don't pre-cook that, you're going to end up with a pizza where everything starts sliding off when you pick it up, and the texture is going to be different. It's going to be a softer texture, right? So this is a more, uh, it's a crunchier texture. My eyes tell me that this crust is burned and not to eat it, but that tomato sauce, when it's burned like that, it's delicious. Probably not healthy, but how often do delicious and healthy go together anyway? You know who's killing me right now? Give me that paw. Give me the other paw. Give me the other paw. Man, you're working for it. You're a good boy. That's how much he's willing to work to have a slice of that pizza. He knows how good that is. Thanks for joining me. It was a lot of fun just doing a little something different here on the channel. I'm sorry if you were looking for a computer build, but in the meantime, it breaks up the monotony of the same old thing over and over and over again. It gives you guys something different. And just like with my computer builds, you don't have to do it exactly the way you see me do it. It, the idea is to inspire you. Think about what you can do. Sometimes just having the one little tip of using that tortilla as your uh, shell for a pizza, that was the dog. You know, I can do that too. <coughs> I'm the alpha dog. Got that? Anyway, so, uh, sorry, that was rude. Um, but sometimes just, just having that idea like, oh, tortilla shell is a pizza crust. That's brilliant. And this doing whatever you want to do, if that's all you took from this, fantastic. That's great. Otherwise, if you just found it entertaining and kind of fun or uh, interesting to learn what a freak I am with regards to food, well, then the video served that purpose as well. And so does this camera angle, very unusual camera angle. I'm looking at the world from Lyle's point of view right now. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys very soon. I got to go back to eating my pizza before it gets too cold. Bye.